In this video, we're going to look at the LZX Keychain Gen 3 module. Keychain is a hard-edged keyer, which is a foundational tool to have in any video hardware system. As opposed to the FKG3, which is a full-color, full-featured keyer, Keychain is meant to be used more for utility purposes. It offers much more simple controls and really excels at things like shape generation. It features three identical channels, each with a key input, a CV input, and a single output. Each channel has a center detented knob for a CV control and a sweepable threshold. So in this first patch, let's just look at what a keyer actually is for those of you who may be new to video synthesis. So I'm going to start by taking an output from a shape generator. I'm just going to show you what this is. So this is an even gradient that goes from black in the upper left-hand corner of your screen to white in the lower right-hand corner. If we start to up the contrast on our ESG3, you'll start to see that it finds this line right at the middle. Um, and that's because a keyer is very similar to just upping the contrast on a signal by a very extreme amount. So if we plug this into the keyer, I'll go the other way here. Let's take the output of channel one, and I'll take that same signal into the key input. As I move my threshold control around, you can see this is this right here is basically the same as when we were doing this, right? And upping the contrast. So we're getting a very similar result. But the big difference is that we have control over where that threshold point is. So when we were doing the contrast version of keying, so to speak, uh, we're at a fixed threshold. So it's basically looking at the 50% point or where that middle gray is. And a full featured keyer will give us control over the threshold. So you can see where this could be very useful for creating a wipe. This essentially is a wipe already. Um, and it can also be very useful for creating shapes. Obviously, if this were something like uh, if we rectify both channels here on the dual shape generator, or sorry, both ramps, you see we start to get a diamond shape. And if you want to see what the ramp version of that looks like, so that's what's coming out of the shape generator. Uh, and it's more of a gradient. And then the keyer finds that threshold point and takes everything below it and makes it black and everything above that threshold point and makes it white. So this is a very cool way to make shapes. And as with most LCX modules, these uh, are all normaled connections. So just with that one input plugged in, we can actually get three different colors here. So we can go into the red, green, and blue channels. And by playing with different threshold controls, change those color mixes. So now we're just getting three different solid diamonds. You can see it turns white where they all overlap. That's where all three of our keys are the same. And we get those different colors on the edges. And of course, there's also a CV input. Um, and obviously you could use that for things like LFOs um, that will change that threshold control but another very common and essential use for this is to create more complicated shapes by getting different image sources involved. So now uh, let me go back to just one, just for a second to make it nice and simple. Um, so now we're looking at, we've got our first input, which is just creating this diamond. And then let's find a nice second input here Let's make this a little bit simpler. Yeah, let's do this squiggly guy. Okay. So we've got our diamond, and then in the CV, we add that second shape. And so we can start to modulate the first shape with the second and get some interesting patterns. You can just have a little play around. There you go. Now I've got this kind of four pointed diamond. And so now that we've got that, we can again go into the different color channels and get these different variations on the shape. 
And so that's just a basic introduction to how a keyer works. So you essentially can move the threshold point around uh, and then CV it to create different possibilities for different shapes. This is a pretty foundational technique for all video synthesis um, and all video work in general relies on keying. So now let's take a look at some of the more creative things you can do with this module. In this next patch, we're gonna look at how you can combine two basic keys from the keychain into a more complex key. Specifically in this case, we'll be looking at something like a window key. So let's look at the basic concept of a window key and then we'll try to make a cool looking patch from the result. So here I have a similar basic ramp to what we were looking at before where the image just goes from black in one corner to white in the other corner. Now let's get a keyer involved. And we're gonna see again, we could switch where that threshold is. But what if instead of having the entire image cut off at a certain point, we wanted to look at a window within that gradient. So we wanna isolate one specific range of values within that entire gradient. This may sound confusing, but in practice, it's actually quite simple. What I'm going to do is take the output of this first keyer and use that to control voltage control a second keyer. So let's switch down here to our second output. And again, because of the normal connection, you're going to see we're getting more or less the same exact thing. I'm going to take the output of that first channel and use that to CV my second channel on the keychain. And now you'll see that I can start to define an upper and a lower range for that key. So instead of it just finding one threshold point, we now have two threshold points. And we could still add modulation. So if I wanted to add an LFO to the top point, what I'm gonna call my top threshold, I could do that. And if I wanna add modulation to my lower point, my lower threshold, I'm just gonna to need to get another module involved. because so what I'm gonna to wanna to do is take this CV and sum it with an LFO. So I'll use the processor for that. Take another LFO here. And then take the output of that into that CV control. So now again, we have a fixed lower threshold and now we can start to modulate that lower threshold. So let me slow that down. And of course, we can change this actual CV amounts. So now I have this keyer sweeping through a range of values, cutting out the middle of the shape instead of just cutting off the top and the bottom. So if I make this shape a little bit more interesting, And I can take the absolute output, which is gonna give me something a little bit cooler. There we go. Let's get some stripes. So to demonstrate this a little bit more, let's start mixing this key in with some variations of our original shape. So I'm gonna take another output from that same shape generator and go into the A output on a processor. And I'm gonna take the output of the processor and I'm gonna take our key output and put that into the B channel. So now you can see we're getting our gradient and we could subtract or add this to the original, whoops, <laughs> to a variation of the original gradient. And I can play with some different color mixes. Bring this down, there it is. So this is a fun way to get a little bit more variety out of the outputs from the dual shape generator. Uh, and we're still just playing with one basic output. Of course, we could also take two different shapes if we wanted a little more variety, but I think this is nice. And we still have a third key channel to play with. So let's try doing a more elaborate color mix. So I'm gonna go into the matrix mixer. I'm gonna take just another output of here another keyer output, and we'll see what this looks like. Okay, so let's bring in channel one. This is our gradient mixed with our window key coming out of channel two. And then on the next channel, we have our third keyer output. 
And this is just going to give us this nice variation on the window key. It's using the same CV and key input as channel 2, but we can set a different threshold. Um, and we could also add in another source of modulation if we want. This is going to break the sort of window keyer effect and give us just a totally unrelated key. So in this case, that isn't necessarily what we want, but no reason you couldn't do that as well. And then in the third channel, we have just another gradient output. And let me reset my controls on the ESG so that this works more or less in the way that I'm hoping it will. Cool. And then we could just have some fun mixing colors. And of course, we can play now with a bunch of different shapes. And adjust our LFO speeds. And go back and adjust our original windows on our keyer. We could begin to get a lot of different possibilities here for some cool color and shape mixing. So one of the nice things about Keychain is that it is just three very simple keyers, but very simple keyers can be combined into more complicated keying relationships. In the next example, we'll look at using all three keyers together to create a single integrated effect. In this last patch, we're going to look at a fun example that makes the most of what the Keychain has to offer. We're going to create kind of like a tune effect. So we're going to take a basic shape, um, and similar to the way programs like After Effects and, and other computer packages have this kind of built-in cartoon effect where they find the edges and create an outline and then uh, take everything that's inside and apply a fill color to it, we're going to try to do that with a video synth. So let's find a nice shape that we like to start with. So I'm going to try to get something that's like slightly complex. That's good. Something that'll have a good edge detail uh, for us to play with. And um, what we're going to try to do is isolate just an outline around those shapes. Uh, and so the easiest way to do this is we're going to take two separate outputs from our keychain and actually subtract them from each other. And what that's going to do is it's going to leave us just with a thin little outline that's basically the difference of the two thresholds. So let me show you what this looks like. So we're going to take the output from a processor module we're going to take one key into the B input, and we're going to take another one. And this is normal, so we can just go to the next one down. I'm going to take that into the A output. I'll turn my offset down to zero. And the B channel, I want to subtract. I'm going to just zero out both of these CVs so they're not doing anything. And now you can see as I adjust these, when they start to get close to each other in value, we're just isolating that outline. So this is a pretty cool technique in general um, because you can get outlines of shapes. Um, and this, of course, would also work with video footage coming in or, you know, anything you have beyond a shape. And I'm going to use the matrix mixer to kind of move forward with this patch so we can get some really precise color values in here. So I'm just going to patch that in really quickly. So now I can choose a more precise color value for my outline. And now I can adjust each of these threshold controls one by one, but boy, that's going to be a real headache. So uh, what I'd rather do is use a single CV for both of these. Um, I could use the mat module for that, but I think since I'm already using my processor, I'm just going to do that instead. I'm going to switch what processor channel I'm using to the very bottom one, and I'll explain why. It's basically to avoid the normaled connections, um, because I know I, I don't want these to normal into what I'm about to do next. So it's just easier to keep track of by doing it that way. And then I'm going to take one channel here for my output and put it into the CV input. 
And now I can control both of those. Oh, if I turn the CV up, now I can control both of these with a single one. So I'm going to turn um, both of these keychain CVs all the way up. And that's just going to make sure I have totally uniform control. So now I can change here the width of that line. And by using the single offset on the processor, I can change where in the shape the outline actually happens. So now that we have this nice little rig for our outline, we can control where it is and we can control the thickness. Let's create our fill. So for this, we're actually just going to start by using the third channel of the keychain. And you'll see that pretty much does the job. Again, we want to adjust our threshold until it starts to fill in. Um, so we have to find exactly where that spot is. Um, and then once again, our CV controls, because they're normaled, if we turn this all the way up to match these other two channels, this is all going to kind of follow along. So as I change the offset on my processor module, this is going to modulate my entire tune effect. So I can change my outline color here. Uh, maybe make it this blue and I can change my fill color, something like this red. And then I have one single control that lets me kind of sweep through that shape. And of course I can choose different shapes and it should keep this same uh, fill threshold relationship. And I could start to play, if I get these two thresholds really different, then we'll start to get something a little bit tritoned. But that's for another video for another day. And of course, one other option is to start to add some modulation into this. So we've just been offsetting that threshold shape control. But of course, we can use LFOs or audio rate oscillators, etc., to start to get some motion in there. So that's how you do sort of a basic tune effect using uh, the keychain with just a couple other modules to help out. So I hope this video gave you some idea how to get started with your keychain. Please leave any questions you may have in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.